I don't know what's going on in the community. I don't know what happened. I just heard Oktal is gone. I don't know why he's dead today. The first shot was fired. And after a short break, there were four others. Bang, 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 in quick succession. Legendary Bushman tracker Optel Roy was shot in the back by Kalahari police. When we received the call, our hearts sank at the news. Optel was a driving force in the Tomani San Renaissance. He'd lived as a hunter-gatherer and was training young San in the ancient Bushman life way. We'd grown to know the Tomani, working with them on various projects over many years. On the phone, the circumstances of Optel's death sounded ominous. The grieving Tomani told us that police had hunted Optel down like an animal. We packed up our cameras and drove to the Kalahari to find out what was going on. Our contacts among the San said it looked like murder. The tracks say there was one man that chased Optel. The police said that there were two, Lip and his colleague, and both of them shot. Which is unlikely, as there are only two sets of tracks, not three or four, and one comes back, that's the one that hunted Optel. Five Tumani traditionalists have died violently here in the last five years. Police have not solved their murders, and now they've shot Optel. From ancient times, Bushmen hunter-gatherers occupied the vast South African landscape. They were the first people of Africa and of all humanity. But after South Africa was colonized, bounties were set on Bushmen and they were hunted down. European museums imported and displayed dead Bushmen from the Kalahari. Seeing Optel in his coffin was a chilling echo of the genocide of Bushmen in South Africa. The Trumani are South Africa's only Bushmen culture to have survived this genocide with unbroken links to their ancestral heritage. I was, was Today, the Trumani are a tiny but spirited community who live here on the outskirts of the Khalakhari Transfrontier Park. Optel Roy was much loved and respected by the Tumani as a master tracker. He was nicknamed Cobra for the way he moved in the bush. Originally from Namibia, Optel lived much of his life as a free hunter-gatherer. But when he was caught poaching in the Khalakhari Park, Optel chose to settle with the Tumani and he started a family. He became the leading trainer of young Tumani trackers. He was a child that loved nature. He used to live from the felt. He was almost dead when we picked him up. That's why we gave him the name Optel, because we picked him up. And so he operated with us until he became a game ranger and tracker. And so in nature conservation he grew up and became strong, as he always worked with me. That's why it's so heavy to bear witness to Optel's passing. Optel, een van ons beste spoorsneers, culturele man wat uit die woude uitkom. Optel was one of our best trackers, a cultural man who came from the wilderness, a man who served in nature conservation, who we could use best in tourism. Optel didn't rob anyone. Optel never put his finger in someone's eye. Nee, vandaag onder de grond. He lies today under the ground because of injustice, full of life, hunted like a gimspok. But he lies there, innocent, that man who lies there, he lies there, innocent. After many decades living as dispossessed squatters, the Tumani traditional leaders 
won a historic land claim in 1999. They received 37,000 hectares of formerly white farms and game ranches and rights in the Khalakhadi Park. Because with the recovery of their land by the sun, because of the possibility to rebuild their lives, the whole of South Africa becomes a richer place. But at the center of the Tromani's new lands was the Vitrai police station and the Malopo Lodge and bottle store. As in the rest of South Africa, life breaks down at the bottle store. Fights break out, knives flash in drunken brawls, and people get hurt and die. They grab their needs inside the bottles. And I don't want that bottle store here anymore, because it's become a problem for me. It's now overflowed into a bloodbath. I don't want it in my community, because they never used to live from it. They lived in nature, free in the wilderness. Other people became dominating over them. Manager Kurs Lamprecht refused to be interviewed. He told us he doesn't like Bushmen, but their business is good. Much of the Trumani's income is spent here on alcohol, like this cheap but potent ginger beer. Jakob Malchas, Jakob Malchas and Omer Liena still grieve over their only surviving daughter, whose head was pulverized next to the lodge. Next to the lodge. Early in the evening. By who? The police who are there, who must investigate these things and find the facts for us, they didn't do it and they still haven't done it. They never tracked down the correct murderers here. It was into this community that Optel Roy arrived from the wilds. David Kraper is traditional leader of the Tumani. We met up with him and tracker Elias Festus at the scene of Optel's killing. As expert trackers, they read in the sand the precise sequence of events leading to Optel's death. Then they hear the crack of a shot, the first shot. Not through the air, but it hits something. You can hear that wet smack. It's inside. It's a death shot. Then they told us that while the lights were here, they heard there's been a death here. Over here, the bullet caught him. From here, he struggled and struggled through these small thorn bushes, struggling, struggling. Here he fell, here's the blood stain, here he lay. If we saw how that bushman looked as he lay there, he was conscious and he still pleaded. After he turned him over, he was alive. That's why his eyes are open. If you're conscious, then you look. Those people, he still pleaded. That's why his eyes were open. But it is not for us to plead to death. Derek Harnakom was Minister of Land Affairs when the Trumani won their land. He returned to the Kalahari for Optel's funeral. There couldn't possibly have been justification for a shooting of a person, even if a bottle store had been broken into, which apparently did not happen. Why was an unarmed bushman shot in the back that fatal night? Long-serving local policeman Inspector Lieb Liebenberg stormed up to Elrico Titis and Gert Klutter near the Malopo Lodge just before Optel's killing. Before we came to the fence, then I said to Gert, no man, the van is reversing. We had just crawled through the fence. Then the van charged us. Lip comes and grips me. That young cop grabs Gert. Lip asks, have you seen Honey Boy? We say, we didn't see him. But then he says, I want to shoot him. Shortly thereafter, he says to us again, that if we can find out who broke into the bottle store, he will give us 500 rand. Optel had been collecting scorpions with Silicat van Veik for a research project. On their way home, as darkness fell, they stopped at the bottle store tap to draw water for their families, but they were unaware the police were hunting for Bushmen. 
Ik en mijn vriend optel was bezig om water aan te Me and my friend Optel were busy drawing water at the lodge's bottle store, where we always draw water. When we finished filling our cans on the road back home to the Kalahari, where we live, and we had gone through the gate, we saw the police van going in at the lodge's bottle store. Then they probably went to the tap. Then they charged down on us and we ran in different directions. Him that way and me this way. Then I heard just afterwards, shots. And the next morning I heard the man was shot dead because I'd run straight home. I was never so close where gunshots were fired, except hunting wild game, but not people. Optel's body lay in the sand here, across the road from the Malopo Lodge, inside Komani land. Uh -oh. Those are their chums. They are friends. They braai, eat and have fun, all of them. They are friends. They come now and braai and have fun, so that this type of thing can happen. Omatruna worked with Optel to pass the ancient way of life to new generations. She told us that Optel was targeted because he knew too much of the old ways. He shot him because he carries the knowledge. And they are against people who carry the knowledge. We carry the knowledge. It's not impossible that he will come and shoot me. Because he can't stand me either. It's true. Yes, it's true. My people. Omatruna told us that her own father was killed by Vitrai police, right here behind the Vitrai police station in the 1930s. That magistrate, he said to my father, a bushman, will never come with his clever stuff to me. If you open your mouth again, I'll kick you to death. Then he kicks my father, kicks him in his liver. It shattered. As my father fell, he stood back. Everybody stood up. Then he says to them, pick him up and carry him. The dry police station is the Bushman's worst nightmare. It squats in the center of the Tromani lands. It's a malevolent paramilitary compound. From here, traditional Bushmen who defend their human rights are targeted for harassment. It's in this context that we begin to make sense of Optel's death. The dry police refused to be interviewed. But sickened by Optel's killing, Desperate San spoke openly about police harassment. Is there a reason the police wanted to shoot Optel? Yes, there could be a reason. Because before that, there was a confrontation with the police at Brostwering, also on our land, but Brostwering side, whereby this leap assaulted one of our sand people. <laughs> then he grabbed the gun with his left hand and chopped me against the head and the blood ran down. I stumbled backwards. Then he jumps closer, De Vieux, Captain De Vieux and the other two policemen. Then they grab, Mr. Liebenberg grabs me like this around my body, around my neck and I turn my head away. He hooked my nostril then I bled again. So far as it's criminal, it's criminal. And departmental, it's departmental. But before it gets bigger, at this stage, I see it's a small problem that we will resolve through talking. When colonists arrived in South Africa, Bushmen were smoking dacha. And today, smoking dacha remains common practice among the Tumani. South African police prioritize serious crime, but the Vitrai police seem obsessed with persecuting Bushmen who smoke dacha. 
terwille van die dagha. Nou ons mense nou As a result of the dagha, our people must now be annihilated. Many of our people since the land claim have died in terrible ways. And we want to try ourselves to bring an end to these things. Dagha in die land is onwettig. Dagha in this land is illegal and the police are expected to act against it. Hulle het so ver gegaan dat hulle die They went so far as to call the scorpions men, big men who grab us and punch us in the ribs and demand you disgusting thing, where is the dagha? Because of the dagha our people can't suffer like this. After his assault, Dion took the Tromani complaints against Vitrai police to the Human Rights Commission in Pretoria. When Dion got home from Pretoria, he found that the Vitrai police wanted to teach him a lesson. Dion was taking his kids home in a donkey cart when the Vitrai police van cut him off and four policemen jumped out. Inspector Liebenberg asks, can I search you? At the same time he grabbed me around the neck. I ripped my head down and he grabbed my necklace. Then he stood there with it in his hand and looked. Then I jumped off the cart. Then Captain De Vier chucked a stone at me. I ducked. The children ran away. Then Inspector Liebenberg says to Captain De Vier, come, let's chase him. I run over the road. Then I see people looking from the shop. They scream. Then I stop and raise my arms and ask them, Why are you hunting me? Then he breaks to stop right opposite me, his gun in the hand. Then he spins around me and speeds away laughing. Coward. Then I ran home where I found the children. Just three weeks later, Optel was shot. Two holes in the roof of the bottle store had been left unrepaired for two weeks. The signs say it was a deliberate attempt to lure Bushman to break in. Now they say Optel broke into the lodge and they saw him on the roof. Now if they saw him on the roof, why didn't they shoot him there? Now Optel goes through one, two, three fences. But the police are around the place. They could see him on the roof. How can Optel have run so far from them? and through a lighted open patch where the nearest place is behind him to the dune whereas the holes in the roof are at the back closest to the dune as I reckon they planned that night to shoot that man to shoot Optel dead why do you say that? because he acted so rough he came to us so aggressively as I hear and as people say He's not finished. He's coming again. To put it crudely, I have heard the word used in one of the many allegations that have come from the community that there's still, it's a terrible thing to say, but there's still a word bandied around by some people in the area called Busman Yach. That it's like, you know, a Bushman shot is like the same as a Chimsbok shot, which is clearly uh, revealing of, of, um, very, very disturbing attitudes of regarding certain people as lesser people. Did Optel's murder have anything to do with Dion's complaint to the Human Rights Commission? They chase me or shoot me dead because I can see the expression in his eyes. He swears at me with the gun in his hand and he chases me again and I run away. If I ask him, what's it all about, then they won't answer me. Now he is permitted to shoot Bushman. He is registered to shoot Bushman. He will tell you that. That's what he says. I know he says so. What in the police in gevaar het? Dit is iets bij What's become of the police is something very dominating. They have not worked for our people. They work for rich neighboring farmers here amongst us. They didn't work with the community here. That's why they hunted, killed Bushmen like Springbok. It is 10 years since South Africa's liberation from apartheid. A Bushman symbol is our national coat of arms. 
and our motto is a sand phrase for unity and diversity. But today the Tsumani live in fear of the very police who are meant to protect them. I must walk with my weapon because I am no longer safe and I don't feel safe anymore because the policeman who committed the murder walks around free. He walks around free. Charges laid by the community against the police, they are dockets registered and three of those dockets have been handed to the independent complaints directorate. Game and resources worth millions of rand have been plundered from the Bushman lands. Before he died, Optel alleged that he'd seen in the sand who was responsible. Did he die because he knew too much? The Tumani believe there's a conspiracy to protect Optel's killer and to shield the identities of his accomplices. The Malopo Baki was chasing Optel when it hit this gully and got stuck. Because they chased Optel so fast, they didn't see the gully. There were three there were two vehicles that hunted Optel. The one was Oyan's car, and there was Oyan's son, Okus. It was Oyan's son, and Kurs, and there was Lip, the ended brown policeman. It was them. And what we think, this shell, the first shot, is the fatal shot. There was a small break, and then these four shots fired after each other. Then someone runs and shoots those shots over here to say that he fired five warning shots. Because if he fired five warning shots, they should all lie here in one spot. It's tragic if you know how he joined us the way in which he grew up with me and became a strong man and part of this community. Then it's very heavy for us, for all of us. Our hearts are very sore. We did live in peace, but we are heartbroken. We had to become slaughter animals. We didn't know that. It's a shame for us that the Bushman is worth nothing, that we are wild animals. My, My people. The man is buried. His murderers still walk around. I'm afraid what can happen. Maybe we can chase the police out of there and destroy the place and expose ourselves to danger. Where the government promised us freedom, freedom, with three little blue doves. But freedom they won't be again. Freedom is not there and will never be there again. And if it's just on the Bushman's side, then I don't know. But we haven't known freedom. We haven't seen it. We haven't yet lived it. Four o'clock in the morning, our people must be kicked awake, out of their sleep and searched as if they are thieves and crooks.